Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer with in education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Paragon Active Assurance Basic Monitors Learning Byte. Okay, so here is our example. And I first want to point out what we have on the topology. We have TA1 and TA2. Both of them are connected to the control center through the management network on Ethernet 0 for both of those. And then with ETH1, they are connecting into some edge routers, which then connects into the service provider core. And so what are we going to do? We're going to configure a UDP monitor. And duration is unlimited, because that's what monitors are. Monitors run all the time. With the idea of something goes wrong, you can get an alert. We're going to use TA1 and TA2 to use a full mesh monitor. So TA1 will be sending traffic to TA2 and vice versa. And this will be over ETH1 for both test agents, of course. And then we're going to have an aired seconds threshold of 0% loss. So if there's any loss, we're going to record some aired seconds. And so then we'll run the monitor, examine the results, and also I'll create some problems in that service provider core to simulate a failure. And we can see what happens with the monitor when a failure happens. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the Paragon Active Assurance Control Center web interface and get this started. All right, so here is the Paragon Active Assurance web interface. This is the control center, of course. And let's go ahead and go over to the monitoring button on the left. And we can see here we can list the monitors or we can create a new monitor. If we select list, it'll list any monitors that have currently been ran. There's nothing there, so we can select create a new monitor. Or if we go back to the ribbon on the side, we can select new monitor here as well. And to begin, we need to give it a name. Call this UDP monitor LB. And then we can select from below. We can select the different monitors to use. And so we have different elements. On the left, we have TCP UDP performs, as well as other sections like HTTP and DNS. And reflector base, that's where you will find TWAMP monitors. And so there's a lot of different configuration here. We're just configuring a basic monitor. We're going to select UDP and notice how. UDP is shaped like a puzzle piece. We can add another monitor in here in parallel and it'll run at the same time. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and select full mesh. And then we need to select the clients and the interfaces of those clients. And here we can filter the interfaces. We have quite a few interfaces. Here. We actually have more than just TA1 and TA2. And so we're not using the TA3 and TA4. So let's go ahead and deselect IPv6, deselect management. And we're left with just the interfaces we want to use. And number of flows, we could just leave that at one. We really only want one flow going at a time, but that will be one flow from TA1 to TA2 and one flow from TA2 to TA1. And we'll set a rate of one megabit per second. Now with a monitor, since this will be running all the time, you do want to set it at a low rate. And then we can select the destination port and we can leave this at the default of 5000. And one thing that's great about this is we will be testing that UDP traffic you can get through without any loss and also UDP traffic that is using port 5000 as the destination port. So if there's any firewalls in the way or any possible changes that might happen, traffic gets rerouted through a different firewall, we'll know if port 5000 is not open in between TA1 and TA2. And then the client port, that's the source port. We can just leave that blank and then it will just randomize the number. And then we have threshold for aired seconds. In the slides we talked about, setting this to 0% loss. We can also set some jitter, some delay, and things like that. We don't need to do that here. You can see on the right, we have some examples of setting some delay and jitter. But for this, we really don't need to worry about that. And then we can set the DSCP value we're expecting. And then we also have severely aired seconds threshold as well. And we don't need to do anything there. We do have an advanced section where we can say that we do or do not want to fragment the frames. And we can set the ethernet frame size. We set the DSCP value that we're sending, uh, some VLAN priority as well as socket send buffer and socket receive buffer. And then the last section we have is the SLA thresholds. And by default, those values that you see there is what you get. So that means that if we're 99.95% good, so no error seconds for 99.95%, then it's going to report a good SLA. 
If it's in between that and 99.5%, then it's going to report an acceptable SLA. And so let's go ahead and scroll back up to the top and we're basically ready. Well, one last thing I do want to talk about, we can add a new alarm. We're not going to do that in this learning bite, but that will allow you to be alerted through some means like an email or something else if this monitor has problems. So let's go ahead and click start. And we can configure some periodic reports. Uh, that's not really necessary for what we need to do. And so let's click start without report. And the monitor is being set up. It's not running just yet, but it is being set up. And it'll just take a few seconds to get going. And you can see here we have our first results. And we see we have two streams as well. Remember that we are doing full mesh. So TA1 will send to TA2. You can see that here, TA1 to TA2. You can see the interfaces that are involved, Ethernet 1. And we see who is the client, who is the server. And then you can see over here, if we go down a little bit, we see the arrows pointing the other direction. So it's the reverse stream. And you can see here in the air second history that we don't have any air seconds. Everything's looking really good. We can see the rate, the loss, the delay. Things look good there. Now, since this is a monitor, this will continue to run indefinitely. And so the whole idea of this is to pick up potential issues in the network before any user reports it. And so that's the whole idea behind this. And so with that, I'm going to jump to a service provider router that I have on the other screen of mine, and I'm going to cause a quick problem and we'll lose traffic with this. And it'll take a little bit of time as I made a routing change. And so the routing protocols do have to update. And so if we just wait a few more seconds, things should be updated. And actually, there it goes. That looks good. We're actually seeing some problems. You can look at the color coding legend and you can see that red means we have 10% errored seconds and black means that we have more than 50% errored seconds. And so one thing to keep in mind with monitors is that the resolution is 10 seconds. So it takes a reading every 10 seconds. And so you can see here that our rate is down. It's definitely not one megabit per second. So we're still sending, but our loss will continue to go up every 10 seconds. And the reason behind that is that's how much traffic has been lost since we started the monitor. And so, yeah, things are not looking good. Well, they are looking good for our learning bite since this is what we meant to do. But if this was a production network, we would definitely have some problems that we would need to go solve. Okay, so with that, I'm going to jump to that service provider router that I have on another screen and roll back that change to fix the problem. And so in this scenario, if this were a production environment, you would have some sort of alarm set up and you would be alerted right away that, hey, there's something wrong with this monitor, we're losing traffic. And so this would allow you to quickly address the problem before users started opening tickets. And that's the whole point of Paragon Active Assurance. And so I'm gonna go ahead and roll back those changes on that service provider router. And it'll take just a minute to propagate the routing information through the service provider core. And so we'll see a change here shortly. And so that change has been implemented. So there's going to be some OSPF interfaces coming up on different routers in that service provider core. And so then they got to pass the information. So it should just be a few more seconds that we should see a difference. And also keep in mind, this is a good time to remind you that the resolution on monitors is 10 seconds. And so we'll see something every 10 seconds and update. And you can see here that we do have green again on the air seconds, which means that we're not losing traffic. That light green that you can see in the legend there, we're all of a sudden back to not losing traffic. And that's great. Remember that the air seconds was set to 0% loss. And so that's that light green color. That means we are not losing traffic. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. And in this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure and run a basic monitor. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.